Hello and welcome to Call of the Wild. Today we are playing a quest walkthrough in Leighton Lake District. We will be using several DLCs. We will be playing the Weapon Pack 1, High Tech Hunting Pack, Tents and Ground Blinds, and the Tree Stands and Tripod Pack. In this quest walkthrough, there will be several guidelines we'll be playing by. The first one will be harvest animals only in their soul. No harvesting of animals that are traveling. Number two is going to be harvest around the quest line. So we're going to be harvesting only the animals that are related to the quests. And three, we're going to have very minimal impact on our zones and these guidelines are to protect the integrity of our zones we will be going through basic guidelines and strategies for setting up our zones and setting up grinds for new players and newish players i will also be going through basic menu functions as well as basic play function. We are going to let the game develop as the walkthrough progresses through the quests. And we will explore as well through the quest lines. All right, so let's get this Layton Lake District walk through moving. Welcome to Call of the Wild. Ah, you made it here in one piece. Welcome to the Untamed Wild. Name's Colton Locke, but everyone calls me Doc. I'm the warden up here, and I know just about every nook and cranny of this place. I heard this is your first time in the Pacific Northwest and Lake District. Well, this here's the best hunting reserve you'll find in a hundred miles. I've been hunting here my whole life, and I still don't get tired of this place. Go ahead, look around. There's a lot to discover around here. Not just the big game. Let's see what you can do. Try to find an animal track around here. All right. <clears throat> so, on our bottom left is our hunter mate. You can see it's got the time. 0800 hours. We've got our location in the map. We're in Belmont. Just under that is the quest. So let's accept the quest. And now we have our objectives. So locate a track, shoot an animal, and harvest an animal. Let's put that away and scroll to our binoculars. Okay, so in the bottom right, we can see the round compass. The center is our direction we're facing, and the green cone is wind direction. The wind is blowing from the northeast. Next to that, you can see we have our binoculars. Underneath that is our health bar. Underneath that, the three boxes. The first one is heart rate. We will get into in just a second. The next one is visibility to animals. Right now we are standing. We are full visibility. Crouch, medium visibility. Prone, no visibility. Next to that is our noise indicator. That's how much noise we are making. Let's go ahead and... Use your binoculars to get a closer look. Spot this animal. And now the animal is highlighted blue. It tells the species up front, uh, up on top. It 
tells the gender in the box with the picture of it. And then the box after that, it tells us what it's doing, how it feels, its level, its class rating. So class four, it's level one, it's trivial. Oh, we can see another animal in the, in the distance. See, that's a male. He's level two, he's minor, he's calm, he's traveling. So, respot, oh, we've got a herd. Okay, that's a female, calm, trivial, level four, it's the same. <clears throat> we've got another male, level two, minor. Excellent, excellent. Well, back to our starter deer. Re-click on it to respot it. And now let's scroll over to our right. Now just holding down aim, zooming in, we can see our wobble. Our wobble's almost going the whole height of the deer. So reduce that and go into medium crouch. And look at how our wobble has slightly decreased. Now to decrease it even further, we can go in a prone. And here it is even less exaggerated. So to use this wobble to our advantage, we hold our breath. So let's see what happens when we hold our breath. Let go. Did you see what happened? It went up and to the right. Let's do it one more time. Let go. See that? So we're going to use that to place our shot. Now we're going to adjust a little bit. <clears throat> And if you choose the up or the down part of the wobble, it doesn't matter. You just want it lined up. See if I couldn't have done it there. You want to aim for a vital, a heart or a lung. I'm going for heart in this case. Oh, just didn't go high enough on the wobble. Another quick note. When you hold your breath, look at your heart rate. You no, know, I spotted some tracks earlier, close to where you're at right now. I'll send the coordinates. Do you notice this wobble too? And your heart rate went red. So let's let our heart rate get back down to normal. Get back on the deer. And get ready for our shot. All right, so here we go. I didn't have it on that one. I will have it on the next one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I know that was a hard shot. They went straight down. So to verify... Click on your hunter mate, and you can see the purple on the ground. That is your hunting pressure. We will get into that a further, a little later. But let's go look at our kill. So it's lit up. You can see the tracks. You can see the blood splatter. So on a big blood splatter like this, it's guaranteed an organ shot. So let's go ahead and see if I can click on it without confirming the trophy. Mm. 
Well. Let's see if I can go down. Okay. There we go. Blood splatter, vital organ, just now, and we did complete the locate the track. So now let's check out. So this is your scorecard. We'll get further into more into this later on. The most important thing though to note is it's a female, so there is no trophy rating. And we can check out our shot. So if you have a broadside shot, you definitely can go for a lung. Look at how big the lung is. Right behind the shoulder. Both sides. Definitely good shots. All right, so I got a heart shot. Beautiful, beautiful. Does tell the distance, the ammo, the weapon. You can click on over to see its status, if there is status, but there's not for this case. So I'm going to go ahead and say harvest. There are lookout Except. points spread out all over the reserve. All right, so... <clears throat> Hunting pressure is this purple area. So we are pretty much in the center of it right now. So let's just go to the edge of it, roughly. And we can see that it is 123 meters. So we can see that in the bottom right. You see, it tells us our area. We're in Belmont. We're in Belmont. The numbers under that is the GPS coordinates of our cursor. And under that is the distance from our cursor to our central location. So you can see about 100 to 150 in some areas, 120. So 100, 150 meters is the hunting pressure from the shot. So it's the shot that was planted. The darker the color, the more the pressure. And we'll get more into that later as well. So if we go to mission log, story mission, getting the lay of the land. The new objective is to visit a lookout point. On our map, we have a lookout point. Tells us 10 minutes away and the GPS. Let's place a waypoint on it. Go ahead and accept the mission on your hunter mate. Switch back over your rifle. Put your rifle away. Onward. Feels good to start the game uh, with a with a hard shot. There are times when you'll want to be moving fast out here, but not when on a hunt. The animals will hear you coming a mile away. I would have liked the rifle score to have been a little higher, but that's okay. Stay low when you're stuck in an animal to avoid being seen. Mm. All right, so we've got a. An animal call. It's from a black bear and it's a warning call. It means 50 to 60 meters away. Let's go ahead and scroll to our binoculars. Mm. And he's behind that rock. There he is. Listen, listen. Did you hear that? 
calls are really helpful when locating an animal. That's a close one. So that's a female. She's a level two. She's a minor. She's a class seven. See that? All right. Beautiful bear. We could go check out to see what she was doing. See if there's a zone there. But not this early. We just want to get to a look out. Whatever we're not going to away. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the tracks that are blue are tracks of the animal that you were last spotted or the last track you're tracking, you examined. Track has a cone. Blood spells also have blood spots, also have a cone. Dung piles do not have a cone, all right? And if you click on a dung pile, it will mark off, it will take off the cone of the last track you were on. So you have to go back to that track to get the cone back. Also, animal tracks from different animals that you are not currently See, that's a turkey. It's a warning call. It's a class one animal. So back to the tracks really quick. An animal track that you are not currently on will be white. And you can change that by going into your system, going into interface, under clues, you've got inactive tracks and active tracks. You can change these to whatever colors that you can see better for you. All right. There's also other stuff here too, but that's that primarily. Also, really quick, in inventory, go to ammo. And you can see your different ammo. But for now, importantly, in the bottom right-handed corner, you can see recommended classes, two through six. The 357 is also two through six. The 12 gauge buckshot is recommended classes two through five. So that's how you can figure out if you're Ammunition, ammunition is correct for the class of animal you are hunting and or harvesting. So this is a codex marker. Let's go ahead and inspect it. This one is a written note. Let this note here for someone to find. Whoever you are, walk in peace. Go north to find the closest outpost. You can't miss the curious tombstones close by. All right. So that unlocked a little bit of lore. Here we got some XP out of it. So I heard a, a turkey goblin over there. We could see if we could spot it. Let's go ahead. Oops, wrong one. And if we can spot it, we'll get a zone out of it, if it's in a zone. So let's go ahead, spot it, it's calm. It says it's traveling, it's just going around in circles. But it's calm. It is a class one and looking at our ammunition, looking at what we have, we do not have the proper weapons for a class one animal on us at this time 
examining tracks, you can see what they're doing. They're trotting. You can see a moose's skill eight. There's a white tail. It is four. Here's a dung pile, as you can see. No traveling cone. It also tells you if it's old. There are different uh, levels of, I guess, freshness of manure tracks. Very old, being the bottom, and just now being the freshest. Getting your feet moving, I see. Just remember to take a breather before shooting anything. So when looking at multiple tracks, you can see the ones you are highlighted on. That's the animal you are on. And the white ones, again, are the animals you are not on. So we got our first look out. Would you look at that view? Never gets old, I'm telling you. From up here, you can see a lot of great hunting spots in the area. Balmont's not only where Hope set up camp, it's also famous for the railroad bridges along the old North Pacific line. Keep an eye out for them if you can in between blacktail hunting. Or... Why not use them as vantage points? I once bagged a whitetail from the Runaki Bridge. Be sure to stop by one of the outposts. You can find pretty much anything you need there. All right. Well, several things are happening right now. One is we got the lookout. And so what the lookout did is it uncovered a big section of our map. So now we can move our cursor over these green dots and see what they are. Outposts are the little houses. And these question marks are just undiscovered. Just like this codex point, point of interest was. So we don't know exactly what these are yet, but we can see two outposts. Now this was a clue telling us to go north. So we will continue north. So we want to hit up this first. These other ones we will leave alone for now and consider them part of a zone for now, I suppose. Another thing that happened is we leveled up. So you can see we've got one skill point at the top center. And now this is how we use our skills. There are two different trees. And you cannot um, cross them. So for instance, if I put my first point in local tracks, and then go to ambusher, and I try to put a point in spotting knowledge and under spotting knowledge you see spend one skill point to unlock in red. That point does not cross over. So in order for me to unlock this, I have to spend one point in this tree. All right. So for the first six points we want them all to go into ambusher and the reasoning is we want in tier two site spotting if you look under it it says spend five skill points to unlock so we have to spend five skill points 
before this becomes unlocked. So sight spotting unlocks the ability to spot animals while in aim mode with weapons. This means you do not have to switch to binoculars or a rangefinder device to spot an animal. This will save us so much headache and this will also give us the ability to harvest multiple animals from a zone at once with greater ease. So we need to spend five skill points here. Really quick, going into Stalker, if we were to spend the same six skill points in Stalker instead, if you look at locate tracks and look at the three different levels, the directional tracking cone becomes more accurate and narrower, both in the world and on the map. Level two is increase the distance at which tracks are visible and highlighted. Level three, the directional tracking cone is even narrower and tracks can be detected even further away. This is incredibly powerful and incredibly useful in creating a strong build for looking for your zones early in the game. I highly recommend them early in the game for a different build. Same thing with track knowledge. There's three levels. Level one is reveals information about an animal's gender when investigating footprints and vocalizations. Level two is reveals information about approximate animal group size when investigating need zone tracks and an animal's approximate health when investigating blood trails. Level three reveals information about an animal's approximate weight when investigating footprints and fur types when investigating disturbed vegetation. So really quick, disturbed vegetation is this one. So these six, these two, are incredibly useful very early in the game. You can, you can set up some nice, wonderful builds just with these two. And this will be at level 12. Right now we are at level 2. But for this build, we want starting out as soon as we can, site spot. So how this is going to work is our first point goes into Scent Tinkerer, no matter what. So level one increases the number of uses per canister for all scent lures purchased. It's really good, except we can't use scent lures this early in the game for this map. We do not have any scent lures for animals on this map that we can use at this time. And it's going to be later on in the game we'll, when we level up that we'll be able to use any scent lures at all for this map. So there's just one point there. The second point is going into the more the merrier. Increase the monetary reward gained from completing any mission by 5%. This is, this is a mission walkthrough makes perfect sense and then the next three points all go into spot knowledge this increases the amount of information that be gained from the last animal spotted level one reveals additional information about how aware the animal is of nearby threats level two reveals information about the approximate health of an animal Number three, reveals information about the approximate trophy rating and weight of the animals. Very useful things. We are going to be getting these regardless. And then for our sixth point, right here, spiding knowledge. After that, we are then going into stock. These skills are just way too useful for us to neglect. When it comes to perks, we're going to have five points by level 12. 
Our first point is going to be muscle memory. Level 1 unlocks the ability to ready your next shot without leaving a mode for rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Level 2 increases ready speed after firing for all weapons. The second one will be zeroing. Unlocks the ability to zero distances. So level 1 is short range, level 2 is long range. And then the third perk we're interested in is steady hands. Decrease wobble while in aim mode using any weapon. Each level increases the effect. Unlock increases the effect. So the way we're going to do this is first point, second point, third point, fourth point, fifth point. And that will be our perks and skills till level 12. And we have a new mission. So stocking up, visit an outpost. So let's go ahead. Our hunter mate, we accepted it. Visit an outpost. We already marked it. And now, if we want, we can do some spotting. Just something really quick. Just a quick once over. We are pretty far away, so I'm not expecting too much. But if we can get one or two zones, that'd be nice. As of right now, we have no zones, so we have no idea what animals are doing right now. So now, we've got to start exploring our map, finding out where and what the animals are doing. It's a mystery. I have not found anything. I came from that way, so uh, chances are going to be very slim of a spot. Even if it's behind trees and bushes, there can still be a spot come up. So just because you can't physically see it, the game will still give you a spot within reason, of course. All right, let's get to that outpost. Now, different animals are in different areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. We might find an animal prevalent in one part of the map, and not so much in another. Each animal also has preferences. And you can read more about that in the Codex. All the way at the bottom. I will be going through this a little bit more. Not too much, but you can, you know, pick your animal. Here's Blacktail. So I will get a little bit more into that. Um, there are a few things that are useful to know in the beginning, I guess. Though, uh, a lot of it won't be more useful until the, more into the game, but things like your stats, you know, the game doesn't keep 
all of your stats. But in Codex, under a hunting log, you do. And Hunter, you do have different, you know, you do have different things going on here. So, I highly recommend you go through Hunter, Hunter Log. The district you are on only opens up stuff that you have opened. So like under Regions, Point of Interest, you've only unlocked one. And that's the written note. People, we've only met Doc. So that will grow as your information of the map grows as well. But your stats are your basic stats that the game gives you is in Codex. There's also some, also some more other interesting things I should make note of as well. The Hunt Club gives you challenges. So there are daily challenges, weekly challenges, community challenges. A lot of fun and interesting stuff. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. All right, so that's a black tail. Class 4, it's a warning call, 70, 70 to 90 meters away. It's not its tracks, that's rabbit tracks. Rabbits are class 1. All right, so this next marker we're coming up to is a green question mark, so we do not know what it is yet. And if it turns into the eye, another codex. It's more storyline. So let's go ahead and interact with it and see what this says. Alright, so this is a note by R. Hope. It's a uh, survivalist. So, cutting tool, cover, flint and steel, rope, container, awareness, and curiosity. All right, little lore unlocked. A hundred XP for that. So it looks like we get a hundred XP for finding those. So we definitely want to make that a point, especially this early in the game. And now let's go ahead and place our waypoint at the outpost. <clears throat> We're going to continue along the road. Uh, it, the fork is just right here. We are hunting in a fine establishment. So we 
you know, we want some some manners of the landscape. All right, so 50 to 60 meters away, it's a warning call. Can we spot it through those trees? It's pretty thick. Let's go ahead and put a marker. So 50. It's super close. That's good enough. We're going to go ahead and leave him, <clears throat> leave him be for now. But we will come back. Check him out. See if he's still there. I'm gonna guess he's not gonna be. That's a different animal. But that's a what? That's a white tail, or yeah, white tail jackrabbit. We just got animals yelling at us all over. We got rabbits running all over. We got bears running all over. We had other white tail running all over. <clears throat> Alright, so what time is it? I can't see the wobble. <clears throat> okay, it is uh, 1030. So let's go ahead and claim this outpost. Fast travel to this outpost is now available. Nice place, right? You won't find a soft bed in many parts around here. Don't forget to stock up before heading out. Okay. Let's go get that, uh... That graveyard, remember? Graveyard is just south. Right by this uh, workshop. Tool shed. Here it is. Glows just like a track. Gives us an entry into the codex. Hey there, you know that Quite a bit of XP. I mentioned earlier, uh, Hope. Well, looks like he's been having a bit of a problem lately. These lands are wild, but people have been living and coming here for hundreds of years. There are lots of remnants, both large and small, of their time here. Now, since this is federal land, any historical artifacts you find belong to the state and must be turned in. Uh, to encourage that, however, the Office of Archaeology and Historic Preservation will provide a finder's fee for authentic artifacts. He's been camping out over at Balmont a couple weeks, but coming back last night, he found his camp turned on its head. Some food was taken, and apparently the place looked like it had been really messed with. I don't know if it was an animal or some tourist troublemakers, but I'm up in Chopeka all day and can't look into it. Listen, I know you probably have other plans, but you're in the right neck of the woods, and I'd sure be grateful if you could just stop on by and have a look. All right, let's switch to our hunter meat. Yep, he has a new mission. Hope showed In up here. Investigate tracks. Said Except. something about getting off the grid. I heard he lost his family in an accident while he was deployed overseas in the army. Hit the poor guy hard. I uh, guess out here you only need to look out for yourself. It's easier that way. Not the most cheerful fella, to be honest, but he's earned his peace for sure. Let's find out whoever did this.
So this is where we can rest. Reset the times. This is also where you have a kennel. And uh, you can get your ATV out. Here's our catch. So this is where we buy things, switch out our loadouts, clean up our trophies, all that good stuff. So really quick, let's go to Trophy Manager, Saved Harvests, and let's delete these. Now let's go to storage, and we are on loadout 1, so let's click on our loadouts, and you can see we have 5 without paying for any other ones. I'm not going to pay for one, but we've got 5 for free. We're on loadout 1, so I want to change my loadout to just my base loadout. Don't need any lures. Don't need anything, any of this stuff right now. So this right here is our base loadout. But it does need to be adjusted. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it. Now let's go to store. So if you look under store, you'll see some things. You know, all your, all your stuff. Some of it is free, some of it you have to unlock, some of it you have to buy. <clears throat> now, I already have a 270, but I don't know if you have a 270. So for playing with y'all, I am going to have, I'm going to purchase the 270, all right? So I'm going to purchase this weapon, just like I'm assuming you have to purchase this weapon when we accumulate 12,000 in-game dollars Okay, and then from there we will most likely just go to the 7 millimeter These are pretty much the only three rifles we're going to be using pretty much We'll get into other things later Here's the ammo We need a rifle score of 50 or better to unlock the polymers. It's also $530 to buy them. The soft point, which we have 50 of, we start out with 50, uh, is free throughout the entire game. We'll get into that stuff another time, perhaps. So one thing we do want right now is the night vision scope. And the night vision binoculars. Let's go back to our loadout and add these. Save loadout. So now we want our portable structures. We want a tent. And we want a tripod. Just to have on us. Notice I'm not saving it. I'm not saving it. And I'm not creating a different loadout either. All right. I just want the base. We can add lures. We can we can take it stuff in. We can put stuff in, take stuff out as we go. But we just want the base. And this is not part of the base. So let's get out of here. Go to our menu. Go to our inventory. Now the weapons are already equipped. So is the sights. Oops, excuse me. 
but you can see how we change sites. Okay, so the consumables are there, binoculars. We've got to add the night vision. I like to put my night vision there, and then I can put my binoculars here. I like to move my scent right here. If I have a collar, I like to put a collar here. And then our portables, I like to put just in its own little area over here. Set it up, whatever makes it comfortable for you. And there we go. Our first loadout. Our first home away from home. Beautiful. Fun and exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up. And if this sounds like something you would like to play along with, please do. Please leave comments about how your first outpost adventure went. If you like this video, also subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get the updated videos as they come out so thank you for joining me have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time